Molly. I am a dietitian here at Operation Food Search. I am excited to bring you this recipe today. We're gonna have lots of fun here. It's gonna be a nice, easy, um, cost-effective recipe you could make on a weeknight. Um, so we're going to make butternut squash mac and cheese today. So here we have our ingredients for the recipe. Um, we have our star of the show here. This is our butternut squash. Um, and then we also have our milk here, which is one third of a cup. Um, we use cow's milk, we use 2% on that. You can use any kind of milk, um, whole just makes it creamier. Um, and then you can also use any plant-based milk, such as almond or oat milk. Just make sure they're unsweetened. Uh, we also have our butter here, that's one tablespoon of butter. And we use unsalted butter just to reduce the sodium for this, re this recipe. Um, we also have three-fourths of a cup cheese. Um, that's cheddar cheese, but you can use white cheese. Um, or it's pretty flexible with the cheese on that one. And then this is our whole wheat pasta here. Um, whole wheat is a better choice than just white pasta. It's gonna increase your fiber and certain nutrients, so it is a better choice if you can get a hold of some whole wheat pasta. Um, you can also use, it doesn't have to be this elbow kind, you can use like the Bertelli, like the um, twisted kind, or even fettuccine. So our next step is getting our butternut squash here peeled and cubed and ready for our mac and cheese. So I was just going to show you one thing before I start on that. So a nice tip when you're cutting something like a butternut squash, because it has a little bit of a thicker skin and it's a denser type of vegetable, can be a little uh, trickier to cut. So this helps a little bit to keep your cutting board from slipping. So I put a towel underneath just to help kind of keep it snug on there rather than having just the cutting board which could slip on a table so just a little tip you can try at home so i have my butternut squash here i'm going to take a vegetable peeler and i'm going to peel it so it's kind of if you have a bigger peeler that's even more helpful but it does take a minute to get those strands started. But once you get them going, it's a lot easier. So I am almost finished here peeling the squash. There's just a couple little bits that just need to be um, peeled off here gonna get these little bits while I'm finishing peeling this I was just gonna share a couple facts about butternut squash so um, this squash is really high in vitamin A um, which is great for your eyesight um, it's also high in fiber and potassium um, it's got some vitamin C as well so it really is a wonderful choice to add into something like macaroni and cheese um, just to add some extra vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And butternut squash adds a really nice flavor to things. It kind of gives things kind of like a sweet, a little hint of sweetness, um, but you can also make it into something like macaroni and cheese that's more savory. It just blends in really well with a lot of soups and sauces. So getting close here doesn't have to be perfect if there's a little bit of the peel on it's not a big deal it doesn't have to look perfect and just be really careful when you're peeling it to make sure that you protect your hands so I have little bits here I'm just gonna clean that up here Wonderful. So I've got my butternut squash peeled now. So what I'm gonna do is cut it in half. So I'm gonna cut it in half in the middle here and I'm gonna make sure that I have my hands in a safe position for cutting. So I'm going to take the top of the knife in my hand here, make sure I have a nice solid base. I'm just gonna kind of gently push down. So 
Sorry. So now that I have that cut in the... <laughs> so now that I've peeled the squash, I am gonna cut it now. We wanna cut it in half. And we want to make sure a couple things before we cut it, um, just to make sure we are safe while we do that. Um, you wanna make sure you use a nice sharp knife and a bigger knife, kind of like this one here. So I'm gonna cut it here in the middle. So now I have these two nice halves here, this gorgeous orange color. I am going to cut the end off, just the very end here, using my bear claw. And it's important to use a sharp knife when you're cutting these. Um, this knife probably needs to be sharpened, which is why I had such a hard time cutting it. So make sure the knives at your home are nice and sharp because it will make it a lot easier. So now that I've cut off the end, I have a nice flat surface that'll make it so much easier for cutting. I'm gonna cut it down the middle. Perfect. And now we have our little seeds here. So we just need to scoop those out. So I'm just gonna take a spoon and dig these out here. And it kind of makes like a nice little circle here. Okay, so that one's nice and clean. I'm just gonna do this next one here. ever cut a pumpkin open before the inside kind of looks like a pumpkin so you kind of get these like gut looking things stringy things so we're almost finished cubing here um, I like to stack mine to make it go a little quicker so I put two on top of each other and then you kind of level them off here and then you do a couple more the opposite way just helps you to get done a little quicker um, these pieces don't have to be perfect this one's a little bit bigger here whereas these are smaller it's not a huge deal I would say try and make sure that they're not much bigger than maybe this one here when you cut them um, they are gonna be boiled and then put in a blender. So it's not a huge deal if they're not perfectly cut. So we need a cup of this butternut squash. So I'm gonna put it in our one cup measuring cup here. And we're gonna take that over to our boiling water and work on our next step. So I've got this one cup of the butternut squash and our water is boiling as you can see and I'm just gonna add this to the boiling water. So it's been about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna double check that the squash is ready by taking a fork and poking it into one of the squashes and it goes right through, so that tells us that it's ready. So I'm gonna turn off my uh, burner here and let it cool for just a few moments um, and then we're gonna move on to our next step. Okay, we're gonna take a slotted spoon like so, and we're gonna scoop out the butternut squash that's nice and tender, and we're gonna put it in the bowl. Make sure you drain off some of that water. You can cut it. So I have my butternut squash out of the water, and Make sure you save your water don't dump it out because we will cook our pasta in this here in just a minute so we're going to move on to blending things up here i've got my one third cup of milk that i'm going to pour into the blender as well i've got my one tablespoon of butter i'm going to pop in And I have my three-fourths cup of the grated cheese. So 
So now that we've added in all our ingredients to the blender, we're going to blend it up. I'm gonna put my blender on high here. check here. I'm gonna see if it's nice and smooth because we want it to be a sauce-like texture. And that looks pretty good. There's a little piece on the side here so I might blend it for just another second here but that's really what you're looking for with your sauce. Nice creamy delicious sauce. So our water looks like it's boiling now. It's time to add our pasta. Um, as you can see, this pasta looks a little darker. This is a whole grain pasta. And whole grain pasta is better for many reasons. One being that it has more of that whole grain component to it, which is great for many reasons, such as fiber. You get more fiber from that, and you also get more nutrients from it as well. So if you have whole wheat at home, it's definitely a better choice. So I'm gonna put that into my boiling water. Give it a quick stir, and then we'll come back and visit this in a few minutes. So our pasta's done, um, and I'm gonna take it and drain it, drain the water out here in this colander. So now that we have our pasta ready, we are ready for our last step. We're gonna plate everything up. So I'm gonna just show you how to plate up one serving. Um, obviously, if you're making this at home for your family, um, you can just take it into a bigger bowl and then add the sauce. But we're just gonna do it in a small bowl. So I'm gonna take a spoonful here of our nice pasta. cheese sauce, we'll pour that on top. Beautiful cheese sauce here. We'll mix it up. And there you have it, your butternut squash mac and cheese. I hope you make this at home and let us know how it goes. Thanks for watching.